Apparently I'm about to eat the one chip challenge and do a Wi-Fi battle at the same time. I'm not going to be able to, to think about the battle. What is going on guys? Welcome back to another Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl Wi-Fi battle. Today we have a little bit of a different one as you've probably seen. This happened on my Twitch stream where I decided to do the one chip challenge while also playing a Wi-Fi battle just to see if I could just double up the challenge. Um, if you would like to see the full version of this video in its entirety, go to my secondary YouTube channel. It's just Hayden Live. Uh, you can hit that top link in the description and go ahead and check out the full video. But today, I'm going to be doing my normal post commentary here to kind of just show, you know, how the battle went. Um, and it was actually pretty interesting and actually turned out to be a fun battle. So, <laughs> let's do it. Also, here's a quick example of how I was kind of feeling throughout this whole thing. It, pretty much the spiciest thing I've ever eaten by far. Okay. Oh shit. I hardly looked at his team. Took a screenshot though. Oh fuck. Alright, so I decided to lead off with my jump pluff, and that's mostly because I know this thing's an asshole. I can put something to sleep and try to like catch my breath for a second. I don't know. At this moment in time, I'm seriously in like the worst pain ever. I honestly like couldn't feel my legs. <laughs> but I do land the sleep powder off on the Charizard, which is great. Um, and Charizard, you know, is not the best best guy to be going against if you're a jump pluff. So I decide obviously I'm going to U-turn out of here and go into something a little bit more fitting. It's also interesting they decided to lead off with uh, the Zard. I guess they were expecting maybe Steelix, something like that. I don't know. But uh, I got that thing to sleep, which is great. Now I can just switch into whatever I would like. And I decide to bring in Quagsire. Now this is my choice banded Quagsire. And this thing honestly takes lives. It's, it's, kind, of, it's kind of unreal. So... Um, I'm looking at their team thinking, what, are they, what is their switch into a waterfall? I can hardly see at this moment in time. I seriously was crying. Um, but I go for a waterfall here. He ends up switching into the Rotom Mo, which is kind of the only answer to Quagsire uh, that I didn't even really pay too much attention to. But regardless, a Choice Banded Waterfall actually does a pretty good bit of damage there. Um, and that's pretty nice. Now, obviously, I don't want to stay in here. Quagsire looks pretty great against... Uh, the rest of his team. So if I can take care of this asshole lawnmower, you know, Quagsire can do some work. But I decide to bring in the Weezing here, expecting them to go right for the Leaf Storm. Not to overpredict too early, but he does actually end up going for the prediction. Hits me with a Volt Switch, and that does a whole lot of damage to my Weezing. I'm not very specially defensive. And now I've got some pretty painful blue balls over here, which is, uh... <laughs> You know, you know how that goes. Anyway, uh, they end up going into the Charizard. Still sleeping, still easy to really take care of, as I can just switch right back into Quagsire. Uh, but then again, I get myself into kind of the loop of them switching back into freaking Rotom. Uh, but luckily, with that thing not having any reliable recovery, uh, it's not going to last forever. So I go back into Quagsire. Um, he does stay asleep. He's still just taking a nice little little nap over there. He's somehow napping in midair, which you got to respect that. But uh, I end up going for the Rock Slide here just because I'm like, maybe he stays in if he doesn't, whatever. Uh, as it actually ends up waking up and it's going to go for a Belly Drum. It does actually end up eating its berry and it's looking pretty frightening at this moment in time unless you're literally a Quagsire who has the unaware ability. So I do not care about your attack boost. Plus, I'm a banded Quagsire over here able to just knock you out with Rock Slide. So, uh, you love to see it punish the old Charizard for sleeping and then hitting itself in the stomach. And uh, that's no longer going to be an issue. So, that was kind of funny. I guess maybe if I was a normal Quagsire that was water absorbed, potentially that could have been a threat. But, uh, regardless, you know, Quagsire is out here chewing bubblegum and kicking ass. And dude's all, all out of bubblegum today. So... Uh, they end up going into a Metacham on the free switch. Now, Metacham is a Pokemon that's particularly interesting to switch into on my squad. Uh, just because I can bring in Weezing, but if it choices itself into Zen Headbutt, I'm in kind of bad trouble. Uh, plus, I can't stay in being choice, ban uh, choice banded into the Rock Slide here, so I basically have to go into Weezing, um, which is fine. It doesn't look like it's super necessary for this matchup, but they go for the high jump kick and actually miss. Uh, which is hilarious because it does half damage to itself. And Weezing's like, wait, what the hell just happened? I'm literally a punching bag, but somehow dude missed me. But he just, it, it's pretty great. Um, so now I'm thinking, all right, I'll probably just go for a Will-O-Wisp here, kind of cripple uh, this threat if possible. Most of the time, if you see a Metacham use a move, it's probably going to be sticking to that move because uh, they're pretty much always Choice Scarf. So it does go for High Jump Kick again, which I can live. And then I end up going for the Will-O-Wisp, which is essentially... 
literally how I feel right about now is like someone used 10 will-o'-wisps on the back of my throat and I'm pretty much dying over here because this spicy ass ghost reaper pepper chip, what the fuck, I don't know. But it was right about now that I also realized that I probably should have just used sludge bomb there because I'm pretty sure it kills at that range because Metacham has the special defense of like a wet paper bag. So I actually end up living another high jump kick because of the burn. And then I just go for the sludge bomb like I should have last turn and that takes care of it. So <laughs> I guess the burn helps me out there and just basically killed it with extra steps. Um, but that's pretty nice because Metacham is a very scary Pokemon. Like I said, my team does not switch into it if it can predict well. So uh, in comes Mamoswine. I'm thinking they're probably gonna want to just set up Stealth Rock. Um, so I'm like, whatever, I'm just gonna go for like a Toxic Spikes. Maybe that helps me out later on, but ends up just going for an Ice Shard, which is actually interesting, and that takes care of Weezing, but honestly, that's fine. I was able to take care of a Metacham with it, and I'm feeling, uh, I'm feeling, I'm feeling good about the match, terrible about my body, because I'm literally burning from the inside out, but this does allow me a free switch into Quagsire, and I'm like, all right, my little water homie, this is the kind of guy who I need in real life to just absolutely hit me with a waterfall, uh, but I'm just gonna go for that because, you know, their only switching is that Rotom, and I'm like, if they don't do it, then whatever. I honestly was like, I'm just clicking shit and trying to make stuff happen. They do end up going into the Rotom. Um, the good news about hitting that thing with that next waterfall is that now it can't switch into another one. So I'm like, okay, I'll put Quagsire back in the old pocket and save him for later, and it can still uh, be annoying. This also opens up the opportunity for me to switch into Steelix. If they decide to do what they did last time and go for the Volt Switch, this is fine. Then I can, uh, you know, do some stuff with the old gold chain here. So they actually end up going for a trick. Um, which is actually kind of funny because had that trick gone off on Quagsire, it kind of would have been beneficial because it would have gotten a Choice Band and instead it takes my leftovers, which is honestly just pretty rude. I was, you know, still eating that, but I guess that's fine. So now I'm over here, it's pretty much the most useless thing ever, aka Choice Scarf Steelix. And that really sucks because it limits me to what I can use. I still decide to go for the Stealth Rock here, uh, just because now that you know, the Rotom's got my leftovers and shit, I would like that thing to switch into rocks to potentially make it easier to take care of. Plus, uh, Stealth Rock is just generally helpful, helpful and it, it, I was like, whatever, I'm going for Stealth Rock. So, I end up bringing in the Empoleon, and Empoleon is kind of an interesting mod. It can do a couple different things, but I figure it probably doesn't want to uh, one-hit KO Quagsire, if not two-hit KO. I don't really know what kind of build this thing's gonna be working with, but I bring in the Quagsire as he actually ends up going for the Defog. So I'm like, hey, that's also pretty rude. My Steelix has been disrespected many a time today, as now I worked so hard to get those Stealth Rock up, and now they're just, those rocks are gone, so. <laughs> Uh, that's actually fine. I'm going to go for the Earthquake here, thinking this boy's probably going to try to stay in and kill me. Um, it does actually end up going for the Hydro Pump, which again is a risky maneuver against Quagsire, because I, if I wasn't unaware, I would have been Water Absorb. And he's kind of messed up the abilities twice on that, but uh, regardless, I'm able to live it, and a Choice Bandit Earthquake does take care of the Happy Feet, and that is amazing. Fucking Quagsire is out here doing the thing, and you just, I'm so proud of my guy, but... Now we have a very large issue at hand, and honestly I kind of forgot they even had a Salamence. Uh, but this thing comes in, intimidates me, and obviously I have to get the hell out of here because I'm, you know, banded into Earthquake. But I'm like, okay, this thing's definitely going to probably try to Dragon Dance on me or something. I don't know. I can't really put a finger on what this, di this dude's trying to do against Quagsire. But I decide to bring in Mawile, uh, mainly because I can get an Intimidate, and if it does dance, I can set it back to Neutral Attack, as it actually ends up going for a Dragon Pulse. Uh, which shows me this is in fact a special attacking one, and I was really hoping it was like Specs or something, but it's not, and it just goes for a Fire Blast, and <laughs> that takes me out. I probably should have gone for a Sucker Punch just to get some damage off on that thing, uh, as we do see its Life Orb there, but shout out to the special attacking Salamence. Uh, honestly, I respect it. I like it. Uh, but this does allow me a free switch now, and I go back, back into Jump Pluff. Now, Jump Pluff can pretty much flourish here if there was no more damn Lawnmower, because I could go for the Sleep Powder, uh, kind of check that threat, but they end up right, going right into the road. I'm pretty much expecting the Sleep Powder. I mean, there's really nothing else Jump Love does in that situation against a fucking, a fucking Salamence. So, you know, that's that's how she goes. Um, but this is kind of a bad matchup for me, and here I actually make a misplay. Um, I really, I just switch out. I'm like, honestly, not even thinking straight, but I, I instead of going for a U-turn, I switch right into Steelix, and that was a dumbass move because I really should have, uh... Should have gone for a U-turn there for some pretty quality damage. But I bring in Goldix, who then avoids a, uh, a Leaf Storm, which is pretty great. Um, maybe it's that Choice Scarf. His speed's looking pretty good. He's able to jump out of the way, and <laughs> hell yeah. Uh, so I end up going for the Stealth Rock again here, as they do end up going for Leaf Storm. 
Um, now, considering that Leaf Storm is the move that they have to use against Steelix is actually kind of nice because after the harsh special attack drops, then Persian can essentially take an attack from that thing regardless um, and kill it. So that's kind of my plan is allocating Persian to being able to take care of this Rotom. But now it's like at half health because of my damn leftovers. It, Steelix, he's like, I'm, I'm seeing you eat that apple, bro. That was mine. And I'm, I'm stealth, or <laughs> I'm uh, choice scarfed into stealth rock here, so that is not fun. But now I can safely bring in the Putthy, <laughs> as with that special attack drop, I can easily leave an attack. And I'm like, okay, so Technician, Choice Specs, Persian, can't really do a whole lot to this fella here. Um, but I do have a secret weapon on this kitty, and that is Hyper Beam. I'm just going to go for a nice Choice Specs Hyper Beam here, as he actually ends up switching out, which is wildly unfortunate, because I was really looking forward to killing that asshole. Uh, and they end up bringing in the Mamoswine. Now, let's take a moment here to appreciate the absolute beauty that is the Hyper Beam animation. I'll tell you what, that should just be an, a one-hit kill no matter what. Look at that shit. That Mamoswine get absolutely obliterated back to the Ice Age. And uh, he probably did not expect that coming from a Persian. Honestly, if had I gone for a Water Pulse predicting that, that would have been amazing. But, you know, there was pretty much no reason to do that, but whatever. Uh, I now have to recharge, and the stupid lawnmower comes in and just kills me with a Volt Switch. And now it's kind of coming down to how the fuck am I supposed to kill both this, uh, this Rotom and a Salamence with what I have left. But, I'll tell you what, I have a very spicy mouth and a dream, boys, and we can make this happen. So, Salamence comes in, and my best option is just to go right into Jump Love here. Um, now I kind of realize that I certainly should have clicked U-turn. I don't it really would have helped me out had I done that earlier, but uh, I'm gonna end up going for the U-turn here expecting a switch back into that Rotom. It's kind of seemed like the playstyle they've gone with so far, uh, but this time for whatever reason they decide not to do so, and <laughs> I end up just getting, you know, some negative damage off on that Salamence with that U-turn, and now I basically just have to sack something. Um, Quagsire has pretty much done what it needed to do in this match, so I decided to bring in Quagsire to essentially die. It's honestly good that this Salamence ends up not being a setup match because it's a lot easier to deal with if it doesn't have speed boost and stuff, but um, I actually am able to live in attack and that's actually kind of important. Uh, mostly just because it allows this thing to have to take one more turn of life orb recoil. Um, so it ends up killing with a dragon pulse, but Quagsire goes down an absolute warrior, like the captain, captain of his ship. Uh, dude, I absolutely just put in the work here. and. Now I get a free switch again into this damn Salamence, which essentially has to be the Jump Pluff. And honestly, as long as you got Jump Pluff still on your squad, you can really, you can pretty much win anything. Mark my words. But I go for the Sleep Powder here, of course. They fucking predict me and end up going into Rotom. I mean, it was kind of an obvious play. I expected them to do it the turn before, but I mean, now they do it. Freaking Rotom comes in. Stealth Rock is helpful because it now it kind of puts this thing in closer range for my U-turns. Uh, to knock this thing out. Now, I don't think at this range a U-turn kills, but the good news is I have another Mon that I can sack, plus I don't even think uh, this Rotom could actually even kill Jump Pluff regardless if I didn't have anything to switch into. But I go for the U-turn, unfortunately it lives. Look at that ass, that freaking smirk this lawnmower has. is absolutely breaking my balls over here, bro, I swear. But I go into Goldix. Uh, he ends up going for, I believe, a Shadow Ball here, it takes me out. Um, and, but that's fine, because Jump Pluff is still at full HP, they don't have any Stealth Rock up, which I think has really helped me out in this match, and Jump Pluff can definitely do it. All I need is some pretty, you know, decent luck, but I mean, I've actually been pretty lucky with this Jump Pluff so far, so I'm, I'm, I'm feeling hopeful. I'm feeling hopeful, plus my mouth at this point in the match kind of feels a whole lot better than it did, you know, right after eating the damn chip, because I'm pretty much, you know, inhaling a pint of ice cream while playing this Wi-Fi battle, but... Uh, all I need to do here is go for the U-turn. They're not going to switch because there's no reason to. And that finally takes care of Rotom. I swear to God, that's like the most satisfying kill of all time. And now it's just me against a Salamence. Now, all I need to do is be able to land a Sleep Powder off on this thing. And the reason for that is because my only attacking move being Energy Ball is not quite going to be enough to <laughs> kill this thing. So, I go for the Sleep Powder. I do luckily land it, which is like, dude, Jump Love, you're really... You're really hooking it up, man. I'm like 8 for 8 on Sleep Powders in the two matches I've used this thing with. And that is fantastic. Now, I have pretty much two options here. Either I go for an Energy Ball and potentially two-hit KO it, or I Elite Seed and two-hit KO it. So I decide to go for the Energy Ball. Uh, turns out, yeah, that's not even enough for a two-hit kill. So, fuck my life. But, it stays asleep. And so, now I either need it to stay asleep for one more turn, 
Um, or I get it to miss an attack, like a fire blast or something. So I go for the leech seed. I'm like, please stay asleep. If you stay asleep, I win. It wakes up and goes for a Draco Meteor, but <laughs> misses. So I got the crucial miss and the, and the elite seed takes care of the Salamence. Honestly, kind of the craziest ending to how that match could have gone. Clearly, there was some misplays and some questionable shit going on, but listen, I was struggling, okay? And honestly, that's gotta be like one of my top 10 endings to Wi-Fi battle, mostly because I was like watching chat, interacting with chat, dying from this spice, eating ice cream at the same time, and I, I made it happen, boys. Anyway, thank you guys very much for watching. I really do appreciate all the support on these videos. If you enjoyed this, enjoyed this type of thing, uh, check out my Twitch channel or my secondary YouTube channel where I upload all of my Twitch VODs. And I will see you guys next time. Peace out.